Welcome to Lecture 12 of Aerospace Propulsion. Today's lecture, uh, we're going to cover Chapter 6 of Comstein and Hayes' textbook. Uh, and this is essentially a review of basic compressible flow. We're going to focus on quasi-one-dimensional internal flows. You've mostly seen this stuff when we were talking about rocket propulsion earlier. Um, but we're going to look at some things a little bit different way here than we thought about them before. Most of the flow in jet engines is well above Mach 0.3 and mostly near to Mach 1. So being able to deal with compressible flows is absolutely critical. And in particular, we're going to need to focus on the behavior of choked flows, which is not something we've had to think about in great detail before. The key messages to take away from this lecture are that the compressible flow through a duct or a nozzle um, has some kind of maximum flow rate um, per unit area, and that occurs when the Mach number is 1 at the throat or the minimum area. And to accelerate any internal flow above Mach 1 to supersonic conditions, you need a converging, diverging area variation. The non-dimensional mass flow per unit area is purely a function of Mach number for a given gas. And in choked flow, uh, so, for example, um, nozzles um, and uh, turbine blade passages, uh, the flow rate is independent of the conditions downstream of the throat. Um, this is the really weird thing about choked flows, and it's going to drive much of the way that we have to think about the analysis of our flow in our jet engine. And when we're dealing with low pressure ratio fans, uh, the thrust variation with speed, with fo forward speed of the aircraft, is quite strong as compared to what you would get for, say, a turbo jet engine. So if we start with the energy equation, steady flow uh, for our perfect gases, uh, considering things to be adiabatic, no external work transfer, then, um, as hopefully, uh, maybe you remember from aerospace engineering fundamentals, uh, the stagnation pressure or temperature will be constant. And so we can write the energy equation as, uh, in terms of the temperature, as CPT plus V squared over 2 is CPT naught, where T naught is our stagnation temperature. Um, or we can rearrange this equation and write it in terms of Mach number, and it's T naught over T is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times the Mach number squared, gamma being the ratio of specific heats. We'll also assume that our flows are isentropic. Uh, and if we do this, we can then get uh, a relationship between the temperature and pressure. Right? For an isentropic flow of a perfect gas, uh, P over T to the gamma over gamma minus 1 is a constant. Um, and so this allows us to write a stagnation to static pressure ratio expression in terms of purely the Mach number. So P naught over P is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times M squared, all to the power of gamma over gamma minus 1. And again, these are familiar expressions uh, that we used when we were dealing with rocket propulsion and also um, back in aero fundamentals. Now, I want to take a quick step back here and think about static versus stagnation quantities and how we know which one matters. Um, right? For some things, we seem to care about the static pressure or temperature, while for others, it's uh, the stagnation pressure and temperature that we care about. So let's think about two examples here. Um, what matters for the speed of sound and what matters for work exchange and why? So think about this question uh, for a few minutes and uh, try to come up with an answer for yourself uh, before moving on to the next part of the video. <laughs> 